our realignment's been going on. But today, an unbelievable emotional roller coaster of what was happening. Did the Pac-12 throw a Hail Mary and catch it? And yet, here we are, Dave Softy Mahler, KJR Radio in Seattle. Uh, Washington, UW, Oregon to the Big Ten. Dave, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's unbelievable. Uh, kind of overwhelmed to be on it, to be honest, Dave. I mean, I'm 50 years old and I don't know anything else besides my favorite college football program and basketball program playing in the Pac-10 or the Pac-12. So from that standpoint, it's a little bit shocking, but I got to be honest with you in the text that you sent me where you said to me that I must be crushed. I'm the exact opposite. I am thrilled with this move. Absolutely thrilled. All we've done for the last 10 years is complain and whine and moan that Washington's in a second tier conference. The TV deal's terrible. The bull structure's terrible. The network is awful. The distribution stinks. The leadership is bad. You can't get non conference games. You're losing West Coast recruits to the Big Ten and to the SEC. And it feels like Washington football and Oregon football have been sitting at the kids' table for the past 10 years. And now they're going to the big boy table. Now they're going to be a part of big boy college football with Ohio State, Michigan, uh, Penn State, Nebraska, USC and UCLA going with them, Oregon going with them, four teams from the Pac-12 heading to the Big Ten. You got a footprint all over the country. You got access to recruits that you never had access to before. You're on legitimate TV networks and not some stupid streaming service from some satellite from somebody's RV somewhere. you got a footprint all across the country. Uh, I know we're taping this right now, so you can actually edit this out, but this is unbelievable for UW. Unbelievable, Dave, for UW that they're now a member of the Big Ten and getting out of that Mickey Mouse conference that has been falling apart for years and was falling apart anyway when USC and UCLA took off. I, I, I could not be more thrilled about this move for UW. I think you misunderstood what I meant crushed. I meant your time constraints because of the story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I always got time for you, big boy. Hey, all right. So, Softy, you wake up this morning. It appears as if for whatever or however it happened that perhaps a Hail Mary had been completed. And then within 90 minutes, it was dead what do yeah. you think happened was that just another narrative to try to kick the can down the road and it just failed like everything else has well i mean if we just put our business hat on for a second first of all the appropriate response is i i don't know right and, and we'll spend the next couple of days and weeks and maybe down the road somebody will write a book about this right and you'll figure it out then but I think basic business 101 is there was some negotiation going on. You know, there was a story that leaked that UW was looking for an extra $10 million for some travel expenses. Who knows if that was picked up or not? Uh, who knows if that'll be a part of the revenue sharing process with the Big Ten? So honestly, I have no idea. But I, I think yesterday when the report came out that the Big Ten presidents had given Tony Petini permission to work with UW and Oregon, you knew at that point that the can was way down the road, right? Like they're not, they're not going to give their commissioner permission to look at UW and Oregon unless they know they have some framework of a deal that they've agreed upon to get them to jump ship and go to the big 10. So this was inevitable. It was inevitable when USC and UCLA took off. It was inevitable Dave when Colorado didn't even bother to wait to see what the media deal presentation looked like by George Klyovkov. They just said the hell with it. We're leaving. We're taking our 31.5 from the Big 12, and we're out of here. So this was a sinking ship. The Titanic had already hit the iceberg. The orchestra was playing on the deck, and people are just looking for, you know, a lifeboat. And I think UW and Oregon found a gigantic lifeboat. And this is really kind of what everyone thought might happen, although it didn't. And there was always the, well... The Big Ten doesn't know if they bring enough value. They're not going to get the full share. But the heck, two-thirds or 75% of a share is still massive. Right. I, I can hear it in your voice. You said so much in a short amount of time. As soon as I saw that report after what appeared to be the Hail Mary, I thought about you. I thought about James Crepia, who covers Oregon. I thought about a lot right. of people that were hoping that this thing would work out 
best for each of the schools involved, and no doubt it appears it does for Washington. Well, no question. And again, there's going to be some obstacles. Obviously, travel is going to be one of them, and really not for the football team, let's face it, Dave, but for the non-revenue sports, the Olympic sports that have to fly commercial, football is going to be fine. You know, as Chip Kelly said to me at Media Day last week, uh, they jump on a bus, they get a police escort to the tarmac, everybody gets their own row, and they fly in a charter plane. So football is not the problem. But the key for UW, you've got three for now, West Coast teams that I assume will always be on your schedule every single year in UCLA, USC, and Oregon. Uh, maybe you bump one every couple years. I have no idea what that rotation will look like, and we'll figure that out as the days go by. But there's going to be some West Coast travel. Midwest, obviously, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, Nebraska, Rutgers, Maryland, places like that are going to be interesting. But I also think that, look, it's, 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 it's a novelty. Washington fans have grown so used to California, Stanford, Oregon, Oregon State, ASU, Arizona. Now you're getting some new road trips. Now you're going to get some road trips that for a while will feel like non-conference games, right? Because they're so brand new. So I just think mixing it up and getting people re-energized for college football uh, in Seattle and adding a little bit of a new flavor to the whole process, I think is amazing. Last thing, did you ever think that USC, UCLA, perhaps not wanting Washington and, and Oregon because of recruiting and the footprint, did you ever think that that might be what kept anything from happening? Uh, what I was told by a few people is that USC and UCLA did not want Oregon and UW to join the Big Ten. Because let's face it, up until today, if you don't consider the Pac-12 or what's left of it the big-time college football, then the only place to play big-time college football on the West Coast was USC because UCLA is not big-time college football. They're big-time college basketball, but they're not big-time college football. So you want to stay on the West Coast and play for a premier program in a big-time conference, USC had a freaking monopoly, Dave, on that. And they had that monopoly for about nine months until UW and Oregon joined them in the Big Ten. So I had heard exactly that, that USC and UCLA had no interest in bringing anybody else with them. Dave, softy, Mahler, I thought about you. I know you're pumped, you're thrilled, you're blanking thrilled. Enjoy the rest of your day and also whatever happens beyond. Thanks for your time, buddy. You bet. Anytime, brother. Thank you. Softy from KJR in Seattle, 365 Sports.